Welcome back everybody to our Let's Play of Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest for the NES. We are Dragon Shadow, along with... Andrea. I make her say everything. I'm so mean. And unfortunately I do not have enough to buy laurels, so guess what boys and oh, girls? Man. War heart farming. Farming time! But that's okay, because we have plenty to talk about in the meantime. We, ha uh, People were watching our previous part, we were talking about E3 and some of the results. Um, and what we thought of them. Now, you actually didn't see the Microsoft conference. No. I actually say they were probably, if we're not counting third-party conferences, they were probably the most lackluster. And it's just because, to shooter fans, it was the best thing ever. To anybody who wanted other stuff from Microsoft, they did not walk away with all they wanted. Um, there were a few games here and there. I actually was surprised when I saw Insomniac making a game for them. And Insomniac is really well known for working with Sony. Well, now they have a new game. I, I, I think it was called Sunset Overdrive. Uh, that looked interesting. And then also uh, a platinum game for them called Scalebound looked really good. What was Sunset Overdrive? Sunset Overdrive was basically like... I'm trying to... Trying to think of a way to put it, it's, um... It's not zombies, it's mutants. Like, there's this mutant plague that's around the city, and in a very fun and, and sarcastic way, like only Insomniac can do, they have you go around this city and start solving the problems with your uh, anti-mutagen, um, and you have to deal with this, quote, zombie plague, but it's really, like, mutants. So... It was really fun, really satirical, and that's why I was interested in it. Um, I'm trying to... Th and then, of course, the, the other part that I had a problem with was this whole 20 minutes to a half hour devoted to... Shooters. The Master Chief Collection. I'm sorry. Look, Halo fans, I get that you're fans. But... I'm done with Halo. I, I want something new coming from Xbox, and I get that Halo's kind of the Mario of their... Uh, their canon, but you can't rely on, totally rely on shooters. Eventually, the shooter fans are going to get bored and want something new. And they may not want to slap down $400 for a PS4 to get it. PS4 or an Xbox? Well, if they have an Xbox, you know. Oh. Eventually, they're going to be itching for something other than shooters. And yes, there are a couple of other things coming, but... It's, it's more of the same, you know? Like, for example, Microsoft got, out, got to unveil Assassin's Creed Unity, and... Look, guys, I'm an, I'm an Assassin's Creed fan, but I'm kind of getting bored of Assassin's Creed. And everything I saw that was, that was of this new fifth game, Unity, did not excite me the way that, like, Assassin's Creed 2 did. That's me, though. But let's get into the... Enough of Microsoft, because as far as I'm concerned, they were kind of lackluster. Uh, let's get into Sony's conference. So, what were the highlights for you, Alex, on Sony's conference? I kind of liked uh, the one the one other game, at least, that piqued my interest was No Man's Sky, which seems to be kind of an indie game. Yes. So, that, that one has me kind of curious. So. Yeah, a game totally based on exploration. I mean... Yeah. I don't think there was really any kind of a combat engine or anything like that. Um, it, to me, it looked like uh, another indie game that came out a couple of years ago, Journey. And I'm not sure if it's... This, no, it's not the same people, because the same people came out with another indie game. Uh, so they're not part of No Man's Sky. Uh, I actually like that, too. I thought it was really inventive that it was just a game based solely on exploration. I think there'll probably be some combat, some action. So. There might be. Because there was a little Oh, yeah, that's right, because they had to, like, shoot away some meteors and things like that. So, so that, that sounds like it might be part of a little... Um, one of the exci exciting parts for me, obviously, was Uncharted 4. Yeah. And if that trailer was in the game engine, then bravo. My, my fears for Naughty Dog are alleviated right now. Wow, just for that little scene? It looked really good. Uh, the only part that kind of made me sad was it's the end. It's literally called Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. Yeah. 
So that so, makes me wonder if uh, if Naughty Dog is just kind of tired of doing that series. Well, eventually some things eventually end. All good things must eventually come to an end. So that that was an exciting part, and also for me, Arkham Knight. Because yes. for people who follow my channel, I've been playing the heck out of the Arkham games. I just barely beat Arkham City. I am loving the, those games, and what I saw in Arkham Knight was awesome. Um, that's a Batman game through and through. And I th you even saw the Arkham Knight trailer. Yeah. What, what did you think of it? I guess it's interesting. Did it make you want to go, to go play the other games? Probably look into them. It makes me want to play them. Yeah. I thought it was really good, and I, I know that's going to be multi-console, but it's it's something to see when, when that console gets to debut it. Kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So... And then you said you said you had a, actually a couple of uh, nitpicks with Sony. So yeah. What were they? Uh, I did not like their Star their Star Wars Battlefront three unveiling. Yeah, you know, we've only been waiting ten years for a Battlefront. Well, that 3. that was EA. That, that was that was. Oh uh, yeah, that was EA. Sorry. Uh, okay, but yeah, with Sony, most of my nitpicks were uh, this. First of all, Sony Television. I don't give a shit. It's like. It seems like Nintendo's the only co company out there that just makes games. And it thus mystifies me that it's, it's Nintendo that's hurting the, mo the most. When it seems like Sony and Microsoft are scrambling to make the all-in-one console. I'll, I'll give you that. The they original their, programming is kind of deep. They're, they want to make their consoles uh, slice and dice and still make french fries. And that's kind of driving What's me. wrong with Julian Price? <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of making me crazy, so... I, I, get, I get what that is a problem. I also... I'm really looking at these whole... Oh, pr test our betas, you know. Come play our betas. Play our alpha builds. I'm like, who the hell wants to play an alpha build? Unless you're just really into... If you're a diehard fan... I mean, Diehard like, fans, maybe, or you're just... <laughs> and you ran in the water. <laughs> this is what happens with the moon logic! Diehard fans or get kind of programming enthusiasts, sure, but uh, mostly yes. I just see it as, hey, play your beta so we don't have to. It, it seems like it's Sony's... just it's a clever way to not have to hire bug testers. Yeah, it's, a, it's Sony cheaping out, and I don't like it. Well, I mean, before you before you get on Sony's case too much, Blizzard kind of coin Blizzard was kind of one of the people to coin that because every time they have an expansion. Uh, once the beta comes out, that's big news, and like everybody wants to be spoiled on what's coming out in that beta for like World of Warcraft or for Starcraft. I remember the Hearthstone beta. Holy crap! YouTube channels were like getting were coming out in droves to cover the Hearthstone beta. Well, so yeah. that's that's just one of the things that comes with it. What, what were you gonna say, him? I was gonna say I'm like, weren't you wanting to play on my account if I had the, the beta? World of yes. Because my, my account's frozen, and uh, I didn't want to pay money into it. Uh, yes. Because sometimes betas are are good, but I agree with you, Alex. They're for hardcore. They're for hardcore enthusiasts, especially like with shooters. You know exactly what you're going to get in a beta. It's multiplayer. That's all they're testing. They know what they're going to do with their campaign at that point. Um, so that was your biggest beef, and then also you had you had a problem with the PlayStation TV itself. Yeah, just mostly because I don't care. I just don't care. Okay, I, I can I can get that beef. I actually thought it was a good idea because uh, it might actually be I, actually one of the things I love about the Vita is the remote play, and so if I could do that anywhere in the in the house, that'd be awesome. That's fine. That's fine. I don't have a problem with. Like, yeah. I don't have a problem with talking about what your technology is going to do for me, mm -hmm. as long as you're not hyping it up, like, like... Yeah, and that, actually, that was one of the things that was kind of my beef with Sony, is they were the only ones that went over numbers this, this time around. Nobody else did. Mm -hmm. And that was a little frustrating for me. Especially when all I wanted to see what, was what the PlayStation 4 library had for me yet. Um, I will say that the PlayStation 4 grabbed me with more games than any of the other three, uh, but that's not saying much. You know, there are a couple of solid anchors there now that I would want to get a PS4 for. But I'll, but here's the thing, also, 
a lot of the games that got advertised here were 2015 releases. There really wasn't any holiday releases. You know, Smash Brothers was one of them. Um, Unity, I, uh, Assassin's Creed Unity, I think, was for... Was it for this year? I think it was for this holiday season. That was it. Most of them were 2015 releases. Mm -hmm. That was kind of disappointing. Um, in fact, that was the other thing with Nintendo that surprised me. 3DS Smash Brothers, October, I think it was 11th, 2014, and the Wii U Smash Brothers is holiday 2014. In other words, 2015. <laughs> Probably, but, you know, at this point, I kind of agree with the commentators that I was listening to. I don't think Nintendo can afford to have it come out uh, after the holidays. They need people buying their consoles. Yeah, they do. So, and Smash Brothers would be a really great seller. That's just my opinion. But we haven't talked about the game enough, because uh, we're actually in the final mansion. Wow, we are. In all of its redness and pinkness and purpleness. If you're going to make that Power Rangers pink joke... <laughs> Too much pink energy is dangerous. Yeah, this is the place to make it, really. This is going to be a frustrating aspect, and eventually I do get fed up. Stupid bottle, you're not killing it fast enough! I'll take the hit. And was <laughs> rewarded for it. Yay! Sometimes you get rewarded for doing stupid crap. And of course, I have to make my my uh, usual errand in these mansions of going and finding the old man. Because, you know, I need to go invest in some oak steak insurance. <laughs> what was the game that... I, wasn't there a game that we were... Or, we were watching the trailer, we thought it, for a minute it was The Last of Us or something? No, we thought The Last of Us Remastered was uh, Uncharted. Oh. By the way, my favorite uh, tweet from the whole E3, from all of E3 coverage was, Wow, I can't believe The Last of Us is now 15 years old! Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, actually, no, you want to know the thing that actually made me laugh because of The Last of Us? Um... You're not a Blizzard fan, Alex, but no. you, you saw the whole thing with, um, for people who specifically bought Diablo 3 for PS3 and PS4, they actually put models of the infected from The Last of Us in the game. So you could actually have clickers and bloaters uh, as Diablo 3 monsters. And that, to me, seemed very unnecessary. Wasn't there, like, a... I'm actually, I'm actually going to cut you off right here because we haven't had enough of a boss time yet. And uh, we're going to have a boss now. I'm not saying it's going to be a whole lot of difficulty, but uh, we this is actually a boss we will have to kill. For the people who are giving us crap about the Grim Reaper and we didn't kill him, and he actually does have a helpful item, the helpful item is to help kill this guy. But as you guys can see, I'm not really having a whole lot of problem with it. No. What was the item? It's, uh, you see how I had the blue and the white dagger in my inventory? It's a crystal dagger. And you could throw it at him and it does, like, multiple hits. Oh. But as you can see, I don't care, you know. And it doesn't really even matter. Because this guy's not even doing anything to me. It's crying. Oh wow, it actually did something. It actually hit me. I, I thought it was just gonna swallow I will give around it in credit. a circle. Let, let's just be honest, I felt sorry for it. These bosses, this, this is one of the, the major complaints that a lot of people had, is Castlevania is known for its bosses. And You're now possessed this was just, by magic. Cross. Yeah, they got possessed right in that one. <laughs> What do you know? Somebody did proofread it. <laughs> somebody, exactly. Somebody did proofread it. Uh, but this is the final part. What is it going to be? You now possess <laughs> Dracula's, Dracula's ring. Wow, an actually thing that's not part of a body part. Point of order. Now, people might be wondering why... And I'm lucky back. respond. Uh, back people back wonder, back. well, why do you have to kill this guy? You need the magic cross. The reason you need it is you do not get get entry into Castlevania without it. Ouch. Uh, Ouch. And that killed me. Oh, I apparently survived. am not good at doing the safety dance. I wanted you to survive so I could make a Mega Man Wasn't show. there, like, um, 
I was watching a let's play of some of the Sonic was it Sonic Lost World and wasn't there like a DLC where you can actually have the costume of Link on Sonic? There's actually Zelda DLC for it. <laughs> That's cool. It was um, really funny. And and the people who who are wondering if we will cover that when we actually do cover Lost World on Dragon Shadow, I think it's a given because the two DLCs that have been done for Lost World look really good. I have not played them personally, mainly because I want to wait until I can get through the game to play them. But they look really good. So we will probably cover them, because I do like to cover DLC that is good, not DLC that is bad. Um, and what was I saying before? Oh, yes. So without the cross, you can't finish the game. You have to kill the mask in order to gain entry into Dracula's castle. Ooh, Biggest freaking cop out to kill a boss. They don't set that requirement for the Grim Reaper, mind you. Well, the Grim Reaper's like the first boss, isn't it? He's the first boss, and he's like one of the most notorious bosses in the Castlevania series. I will not, I will not lie here. He kind of got the shaft in this game, especially when you consider the whole concept. Because I, I brought this up with, to you, Alex, in the Castlevania LP. You know, it was a big reveal to see the Grim Reaper in Castlevania. Death himself works for Dracula. That's pretty big. And then in this one, he got totally jacked. It really made Castlevania fans cry a little bit. But that is actually all five parts that we needed. So, shall we finish this bugger of a game? No, let's, let's finish. Let's, let's go finish it. So now I actually have to figure out on the map where I'm going. Because, again, you can get lost in this game real easy. Um, but we are pretty close. I'm just trying to think on the map, where am I exactly going? And then on top of that, um, what, what do I need? And thankfully, I don't really need anything. Health would be nice, but I have laurels. Uh -huh. I beat this poison spell. I will say this, though, I still enjoy this music, listening to it after so many years. It's good music, I like it. So the composers for Castlevania are always really, really good. I'm sorry, is it humming time on Track and Shadow? Yes. Okay, yes, cool. Is. Let's do it. Come on, Fireman, kill me! I told you to kill me! Yay! It's platforming, Alex. It's platforming. Platforming. Oh, this is a side scroller. Well, now it's a dead scroller. <laughs> Ooh. Get off the stage! Seriously, guys, who was that idiot you let in front of me? Um. Yeah, this is the point in the game where everybody's just kind of, you know, going, "Okay, cool, final boss time." This is going to be awesome! Castlevania is always good for its final bosses. And it probably is not that bad. I'll, I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Is it going to be like Shredder and Turtles? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? I actually can't remember how Shredder is. I never beat that game. My brother did. Which Turtles? The Ultra Games one? Are you talking about the, that one? The very, the very first NES The one Turtles. that the ABG ended. Yes. I don't remember. Yeah, I just know that sh that Shredder was ridiculously easy in that game. That's right. He was ridiculously easy, but the Technodrome was hard. Mm -hmm. It's funny how the main villain in some kind of a series, whatever game it is, actually ends up being easier than some other random. That was the boss. that was the most frustrating part I remember from my brother. Is like he he hammered himself. He threw himself the Technodrome a lot of times, and. It took forever to do that one, and then he's like, Shredder, alright, I get this one. And Shredder gave him no trouble at all. Which is so funny. Well, and, and since you know him, you, you know, you could see him just going, you know, because it was not it was not that hard at all. It's okay, we were, we were redeemed when uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game, came out, and at least we got a good game out of it. Truth be told, that's what we wanted when we played the first Ninja Turtles. We wanted that game. 
after Castle or something. I would still like to have that game. What, the original arcade game? Yes. Double or nothing, it's gonna come out again. Hopefully not in a reshelled remix, because those have not been working out so well for the turtles. Alright, so we're hitting the church. It's time to make our long journey to Dracula's castle. And I actually think I'm gonna have to go use the tornado again. Quick, Sonic! Let's go grab the tornado! Long tornado, Tails. Oh, okay. Can we grab silver? No! We do not grab anything from that infernal game! Silver might be the best thing since sliced bread as far as character design, but because of the game he come from, I don't care! You know, to people who don't think I, uh, mention Sonic 06 enough, I also don't mention this enough. I play Malix every day for subjecting me to it. And he's got his coming. Yeah, whatever. How far are you? Um... At this point, we're still in Silver Story. So... So you finished Sonic and... In, in our recording, anyway. Alright, so this is actually the last town before Dracula's Castle. Kind of surprisingly empty, huh? This is supposed to be Transylvania. It's black and white. It is. And there's not even a single Gen 5 Pokemon in there. So is Tim Curry gonna come out and sing us a song? He should, but he doesn't. Well, do you remember, Alex, have you seen that one Pokemon episode where they make the joke of the ruby and sapphire and diamond and pearl and black and white and all that stuff? No, I don't. It it's really funny. <laughs> well, then tell us it. Or do you not remember it? I'll have to... Think about that and see if I remember how it goes. You'll have to save that for another LP then. Yeah, definitely. Alright, so we are now in the graveyard just before Castlevania. So, of course, you guys are expecting a really difficult area, right? For for Dracula's Castle? Quiet you. <laughs> I'm only quieting Alex because he knows. But what are you expecting, Andrea? What really, am I expecting? Really difficult dungeon before the boss? Probably a really difficult dungeon, but yeah, the boss is probably easy. Well, we'll find out in a second as we enter Castlevania. Alright, so here we go, boys and girls. We are walking through the castle, and walk, and it's all ruined. This, this is what happened when Simon came in, he trashed the place. And uh, we're, we're still walking. Okay, well, we're gonna use the, uh, we're gonna use the holy water here. And we're gonna keep walking. And then we're gonna keep walking. And surprise, the dungeon's empty! There's not a single enemy in here. Wow. That's a first. I get what Konami was trying to do here. They were trying to show that, like, everything's in ruins, but it's a final, a final dungeon. You can have enemies. And they've learned their lesson. But yes, you can walk through this entire castle, and there's nothing in it. The longest walk to Dracula we've ever done. And here we go. So I'm just making sure I have everything ready to go. Alright, here we go. Toughest boss battle ever. Are you guys ready? We're gonna hand over the parts of Dracula. Uh, uh, uh oh! I gotta start killing him! Oh no! He's getting the- he's getting jump on me! What am I gonna do? Oh no! Oh, he's so beating me! He's so kicking my ass right now! I can't believe this! This is so hard! Oh no, it's so hard! Why am I not winning in this battle? Why is it not happening? Oh yeah, I beat him. Face palm right there. A little bit. So that's Simon's Quest, boys and girls. I would tell people what I think, but I'm Although, actually... Although... There's no reason to read that. No, but I want to do my voice. Okay, I'll... I'll... Although the confrontation that between Simon and 
Dracula has concluded Simon could couldn't beat the slow crawling text couldn't survive his fatal wounds what Transylvania only hope is a young man who will triumph. Oh my god, this is slow. It is, really. Over evil. And slow crawling text. And rid the city of Dracula. <laughs> it's still not done! Deadly <laughs> curse. Alright, so with that said, what do you two think of Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest? Starting with Alex. This game is cryptic. How did anybody beat this? I know, right? That's, that's kind of what we were all trying to figure out. It's kind of like, it's, I, I kind of see it the way I saw Fantasy Star 2. It's really hard. It's really cryptic. Yep. So not, not exactly what you would consider the best in the franchise, right? Probably not, no. Okay. Andrea, what did you think? Well, that was just kind of... I don't know how to... It just seemed like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I will still reserve my judgment. It's still... It's not a bad idea to incorporate RPG elements. In fact, I'm very happy that some of the elements of this game were applied to later games and worked. But, for now, this is actually going to be it until Halloween comes next. And then we will tackle... Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse. In the meantime, I am Drac. I'm Shadow. And I'm Andrea. And thanks so much for watching this Let's Play of Castlevania 2.